All right, so we're recording. Welcome everyone. I'd like you to I'd like to welcome you to the Drupal Association webcast. Uh, in this particular webcast today, we're going to be chatting with some folks from Fastly, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how Fastly has been taking uh, Drupal.org and making it more secure, uh, helping us keep our costs under control, and uh, generally way more performant. A um, few housekeeping notes before I go into introductions here. Uh, we do have Q&A open, and I would encourage folks, anytime you have a question, to go ahead and jump in and ask a question. I'll give a few reminders throughout the uh, webcast about that. Um, and just to kind of kick things off at this point, um, I think I'll do a brief round of uh, introductions here. On the call with us today, we have Lee Chen. Ed Bender and Doc from, uh, from Fastly. And no, Doc, I did not try to butcher your name again. Sorry. Uh, and then also, uh, I'm Josh Mitchell. I'm the CTO with the Drupal Association. And uh, Rudy Grigar, also from the Drupal Association, is with us. So uh, welcome, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Or good afternoon. Or evening. <laughs> so international. Good morning. Hey, everybody. Hello, everyone. All right. Well, let's go ahead and kick into this. Um, so when we uh, when we started, the story really started with, uh, "Hey, Josh, you should you should talk to Ed from Fastly. They, they've got this really cool open source program, and uh, they might be able to help you out with your CDN." And uh, the the conversation, you know, started really as a opportunity for um, an organization that uh, Drupal Association as a nonprofit, we're pretty reliant upon the goodwill of tech companies that can help us uh, make our infrastructure um, more robust and more performant. And uh, so we had this conversation that kicked off and we kind of went back and forth for I think the better part of six months to a year just talking about, oh, what would it look like for Drupal.org and our various services to move over to Fastly? Um, started with, uh, Rudy, correct me on this, but we started with the file server, I believe, as the first thing. We tested out uh, file downloads, so all the packaged uh, Drupal projects. Uh, then we did updates traffic. And then uh, right before uh, the release of, of Drupal 8, uh, we moved Drupal.org's uh, Drupal uh, web traffic over to Fastly as well. So. At this point, we, uh, we push about 1.5 billion requests per month, about 20 terabytes, uh, which is impressive when you consider that those 20 terabytes are pretty much all text files. I mean, it's, it's uh, zip code um, and uh, web pages uh, that represent that 20 terabytes. It's not like we're uh, uh, pushing a lot of video or anything like that. Um, but that's been the, the kind of general structure of uh, what we have there. Um, the open source program at Fastly, I just, I, I want to thank you guys for it. I think it's, it's an awesome program. Uh, I, I believe you guys standard kind of, um, offering is up to a thousand a month for an open source project to use in credit services. Um, we've worked out a great deal with, with Fastly where they've given us even deeper discounts on our traffic above and beyond, uh, that kind of base limit. And, uh, it's been awesome. So. Thank you again, Ed. Uh, uh, thank you, Lee, for the, the work on pulling all that together. It's been huge. Our pleasure on that. It's definitely uh, in large part due to our great marketing team. So um, it's we're, our roots are in open source, and so that's a big part of where we come from. So glad we we're able to continue that. Awesome. Well, uh, topics today for today's webcast, we're going to go through uh, quite a bit, actually. We've got about a half hour, and I want this to be kind of conversational. Again, if you have questions and you're, you're offline and you want to uh, ask those through the q and I'm, I'm happy to pass that, those on to, to Doc and Rudy as we're getting into some of the technical stuff. Uh, but the topics for today's webcast, we're going to go a little bit over Varnish Convig. What is it? Uh, why would you use Varnish with Drupal? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit, bit about TLS and SSL security benefits that we get through uh, our Fastly configuration. Uh, a little bit about how we handle logs with Fastly and, and how we can have data streams that allow us to present uh, some great data back to the community about uh, how projects are being used and things like that. Uh, purge speed, origin shield. Um, we're going to talk about how we removed our load balancers 
um, and use Fastly basically to do our load balancing now. Uh, a little bit about latency improvements, and then I'm also going to give an opportunity for the Fastly folks to talk about some of the things that are coming next in their product because I know we're really excited about some of the things that are coming down the pipe uh, that are going to give us some opportunities for more performance and uh, a better experience for our end users. So without further ado, let's, let's get into this. So All right. Varnish and Vig and VCL. Rudy, why would you use Varnish with Drupal? Yeah, so uh, way, way, way back uh, when Varnish uh, 2.0 was released back, uh, I think it was around 2008, uh, maybe early 2009, um, Drupal.org was not using any sort of uh, reverse proxy. Um, and so like, why would you use a reverse proxy? Um, in this instance, Varnish is a caching reverse proxy. So um, what we were t trying to do with Varnish was uh, reduce the number of requests that we're making it back to our uh, Apache server and hitting PHP and kind of uh, saturating that uh, kind of limited pool of connections we had at the time. Uh, so Varnish was set up to basically uh, cache all of our static assets to avoid requests for things like JavaScript and CSS and uh, the you know few images that we uh, were hosting at the time and avoid those requests. So we kind of started with Varnish 2.0 and we're using it and over time starting to optimize it more and more to do things like anonymous page caching and, and stuff like that. Um, and it worked great. Um, it helped us really kind of like build out the infrastructure and help us scale as Drupal 7 was released and the Drupal.org community grew and we were handling more and more requests. Um, and when we had the opportunity to start using Fastly, what it let us do is basically move that proxy server off of our uh, internal network and move it to the internet. So Fastly is a you know giant distributed Varnish um, and we were already using Varnish. And since Fastly is based on Varnish, we were able to kind of take our same configuration that we were using internally and push it out uh, to the world and truly reduce all of the kind of network traffic hitting our origins and move it closer to uh, the point of presence uh, fastly caches that were closer to the global community that is Drupal.org. So uh, it was very easy for us to you know quickly deploy our existing configuration up to fastly when we started using it and then also to uh, load new configuration and revert changes and, and test things uh, through Fastly's interface. Interface. Very cool. So, um, in addition to the the benefits we get out of Varnish, uh, let's talk a little bit about security. Um, and in Doc, uh, Ed, Lee, if if you guys want to kind of weigh in with some other examples that you've seen in the other sites that you work with, feel free to kind of jump in and talk about those as well. But um, obviously, Rudy, we care a lot about security around here. A um, little bit about like what the advantage is with the TLS and the SSL benefits that we get from them. Yeah, um, is it another kind of historical thing? Uh, for a very long time, Drupal.org did not have um, any sort of HTTPS support. Um, and when we did roll that out, um, at the time, our servers were relatively handicapped and had trouble with the number of requests we were hitting with SSL and HTTPS and TLS. Um, so kind of knowing already, like having a CDN that can handle a lot of that raw traffic um, for things like the JavaScript and the CSS and all these other requests that were somewhat taxing uh, to our infrastructure um, was a nice sort of way to offload a lot of that kind of management of of SSL requests, TLS requests, um, to Fastly, but then also um, like knowing that Fastly is caching a lot of these requests and not even hitting our origins at all. So uh, there's the performance benefit there of of having that, and also uh, with having our wildcard certificate and all of our services routing through Fastly, um, we could turn on the HSTS support, which uh, is like a client-side browser forcing of HTTPS for anything that matches star.drupal.org as a domain name. Um, so there's a lot of benefits there that, you know, we now we don't have to manage that SSL certificate um, ourselves on the Fastly side. Uh, we know that they're kind of following best practices around uh, Cypher suites and all of the sort of security around 
having the GDPS on Drupal.org. Uh, so there's two benefits there, and a lot of it is just that we don't have to worry about HTTPS support anymore on the Drupal.org infrastructure. It just it just works. Actually, I actually have a, a quick question for you. Now, now that you have HSTS for uh, all of Drupal.org, are you planning to include the domain in the preload lists? It, it is already included in the preload list. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and and I don't know. Uh, just just a quick thing. Like, why would you want uh, HSTS and why would you want HTTPS? Because you know, I know a lot of people who run websites are like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't need encryption. Like, I have nothing interesting on my site." Yeah, I mean, for us, you know, as a, uh, there's a lot of reasons. You know, the the big one is, you know, we want all the traffic to Drupal.org to be secured in a way that can't be, can't be eavesdropped by other people. You know, if you're in a coffee shop or something and you're accessing over kind of an insecure. Connection, you don't want people to be able to intercept things like your password that you're logging in with or your session cookie or something like that could, that could potentially compromise your, your session on Drupal.org. Um, and having HSTS uh, kind of forces that HTTPS across the entire domain. So if you're, you know, if that session cookie is tied to start.drupal.org and you hit something like uh, get.drupal.org over HTTP, that session might be attached to it, um, so having it encrypted kind of ensures your security across the across the transaction to Drupal.org. Uh, Doc, did you have something to add? Yeah, actually, there's a, there, there's also the fact that some nation states, um, let's say, you know, for instance, France, um, they might have a giant firewall, um, and if the people inside that country then visit your website that might be hosted in I don't know the Netherlands or the U.S. Um, if it's not encrypted, that giant firewall can then change the traffic as it's going from your server to the end user and interject uh, malicious JavaScript that, or inject, I mean, not interject, uh, uh, malicious JavaScript that then does things for them uh, using like this giant distributed network of users within their country. Um, so that, that's another reason why I, I personally love uh, encryption everywhere. The the other thing that I would add to that too is that um, that's not uh, a nice to have anymore. I think in the digital publishing world in particular, when you look at somebody like how Google, well, not somebody, Google is search, right? And their search rankings are now prefing uh, sites that are encrypted higher than unencrypted sites. So while there's a, there's a tremendous amount of security benefit to it just to the end user, I think from a digital publishing perspective as a publisher who is probably using Drupal, um, that's also important just to the core business, right? Like your page rank determines how much, how many views you get in a lot of cases or, or helps drive traffic to your site and having a higher rank on it um, in search results is also gonna impact it. I think the other thing I would call out when it comes to terminating HTTPS at Edge is that um, that, is a, quite a few round trips from a performance perspective, which I think you're gonna get into later, Josh and Rudy, that um, is happening at the Fastly edge versus going back to origin, right? So um, by terminating SSL or TLS at the, at the Fastly edge and having us host your certs, um, you are saving a, a potentially tremendous amount of time, particularly with global traffic or you know, um, if your data center is on the East Coast or something like that, um, getting a lower round trip time on those HTTP requests means that not only is the page going to show up higher in a search result, it's also going to be better performing when somebody actually does click through. Absolutely. And yeah, there's there's so many benefits now to having HTTPS support and really making it easy. Um, configuring with Fastly is, is all wonderful. All right, well, let's, let's move on to the next topic, uh, logs and data streams. Um, and I, it, it's worth noting that our updates traffic, so every single Drupal site in the world has the potential to turn on um, the update status uh, module. And this, this module basically calls home to Drupal.org and says, hey, I've got rules installed or I've got views installed. Is this module up to date? Or is my core up to date uh, for Drupal? And we respond back with some XML that uh, gives them information, says whether or not there's a security release available or whether there's a new recommended release available. Um, and that's, that's a ton of traffic 
In our case, it's really important for us to be able to aggregate that traffic and turn it into a usage statistic. So whenever we talk about the, the 1.3 million websites in the world that are using Drupal, uh, what we're actually talking about is uh, how many sites have called home using that update status capability uh, to find out what's going on. So a big part of this is the, is the logging and the, the data streams that we have there. And, and Rudy, could you describe a little bit kind of like what the, the infrastructure that we've set up is around that and how, uh, how we're using those logs? Yeah, so I was really excited when I found this feature in Fastly because our, our previous CDN did not have uh, kind of like real-time log streaming. Uh, so to basically to calculate our update statistics, uh, we have to have the like raw web log traffic to determine usage. So the sites that are calling back are requesting like Drupal core and a version and they have a site key and we use that information to calculate, you know, the, the site key, the version and how many people are basically how many people are using it. So when, once we got the, uh, the, our syslog endpoint configured, uh, we had streaming log data from Fastly, uh, hitting our, our log host for the processing for this data was happening. So it allowed us to actually speed up and, and really improve on how we were calculating the statistics around usage uh, and stabilize those statistics as well. So we were having uh, prior to Fastly a lot of issues with updates like the, uh, the logs that we were processing uh, not coming through or taking you know, three days to get the log data uh, off of the existing CDN and, and being able to process them uh, more quickly now really meant like we could we could stop worrying about this problem. That was another thing where like there was a lot of time being spent getting these logs and and fixing them constantly and and dealing with all the breakage that was happening. Um, and so now we have the logs streaming directly to our our log host uh, over in our syslog syslog endpoint, and uh, we can calculate the use of statistics uh, more more quickly and more accurately, um, which is uh, really a great feature to, to give us. Um, and it's also fantastic for kind of debugging issues because not only can we stream back the updates logs, we're also streaming back all of the logs for like www.drupal.org and all of the subsites and all of the other things that are running through Fastly. So uh, whereas before there might be some issue happening on our origin server, uh, but we don't know for sure if it's making its way all the way back up to the CDN. Now we can uh, kind of inspect from the CDN level all the way down through uh, like the PHP FPM workers running on our, our origin servers, um, which is great for kind of debugging and fixing problems more quickly. Absolutely. I, I, lo I love this graph too that got thrown in there because uh, Fastly really deals with our spikiness quite well. Uh, the, the, the way that traffic comes in for updates is most, most sites are on a cron. Um, and so we get just hammered um, on the hour and on any regular cycle. So you, we tend to see these pretty regular spikes uh, throughout our usage. Um, I've got to say that's, that's been one of the things that I love seeing is just how well it responds to it. Yeah, and this kind of goes back to just talking about updates a little bit. And we'll kind of walk through kind of like all of the features that Fastly has that have helped us with our kind of our update system and reducing the load on our origin because it was um, before Fastly actually uh, maxing out our, our VLANs traffic limit for upload um, on these hourly spikes. So that giant spike there with the 2000 requests, we were at one point actually dropping packets, which would slow down all of our websites, all of our updates, uh, things, things would slow down and we were having trouble there. Uh, and this helped allow us to solve that problem, so. Excellent. Purging. Yeah, talk to me so, about purging a little bit. let me talk about purging a little bit. Um, Astley does near instant purging, uh, which is great for kind of the initial uh, updates and FTP uh, services that we moved over to Fastly. Um, we were able to build a sort of a, a packaging service that would actually uh, on packaging once a release was packaged and once the update data for that release is packaged. Uh, we, we now dynamically purge those individual releases from the CDN. So if there's an update for, uh, let's say, C tools, um, that 
update gets pushed out and written to the file system, the package gets written to the file system, and then we send a API request to Fastly to purge those uh, releases from Fastly. And we do that with a, a soft purge, uh, which softly sort of clears it from Fastly uh, while it's doing a background fetch uh, to the origin to grab that new uh, release data. And as that works through Fastly's caching layers, um, it pushes out to the to the end. And what that lets us do is kind of avoid a lot of the um, requests to the origin that we would otherwise have, and also helped us kind of update our kind of the, the biggest traffic area of our site, which is updates and and downloads, but mostly the updates traffic. Um, it let us modernize that in a way that we're actually like clearing on release instead of clearing every 30 minutes, uh, which is kind of our previous TTL that we had set uh, because we didn't have the same capabilities in our previous CDN to, to kind of dynamically purge like this and purge instantly and be able to now push out security updates and uh, release data much more quickly and much more consistently uh, to the world. I was going to say this is huge from a security standpoint because instead of it being a 30 minute wait, uh, we get something packaged up. It's a security release. It's available almost instantaneously to the community, uh, both from a downloads perspective, but also from an updates perspective. So if their site pings home during that 30 minute uh, window in the past, there was there was a chance that you know maybe they only maybe they only ran updates once an hour, and that could really impact how long it took them to get some of these important updates. Nice. That's very and, and, cool. Sorry, go ahead, Doc. Uh, and, and now that you're using an uh, invalidation-based uh, uh, strategy, uh, w what is the TTL set to? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, our TTL is set to 365 days. Nice. Uh, so a big improvement from the 30-minute TTL we had in the past. <clears throat> nice. So are you, uh, Rudy, I think we had talked about this a while ago, um, but are you leveraging that same strategy across the standard digital publishing or the standard publishing workflow for uh, generic content, like say on the homepage of DrupalNow.org or is that, uh, is that still forthcoming? This is, that's a forthcoming thing. Um, <laughs> you know, definitely the biggest benefit was through updates since we have so many more requests. Uh, yeah, up. totally. And kind of out of the box, Fastly was so like so much faster um, just with like the initial kind of connection latency and all of that, that we haven't pushed that yet, but it is definitely uh, in the works. And some of the stuff we'll talk about, or you guys will talk about for the kind of what's next with Drupal, um, I'd like to start leveraging on Drupal.org as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's definitely something that we see in a lot of the digital publishing sites that we work with is that you know, that's the primary use case for them around purging. It's really interesting to hear about this in the context of how it's helping updates. Awesome. So requests collapsing. Talk to me a little about this. And, and Doc, I, I think you were going to kind of, uh, kind of explain this conceptually a little bit for us. Yeah, so um, a, a, a problem with, uh, with, with certain CDNs and, and old caches is that um, once a piece of content falls out of the cache, either because it's purged or because it expires, um, what the, what sometimes happens is that when requests you know, from from thousands of users simultaneously come in, is that all of them get forwarded uh, to the origin server um, until the piece of content is actually in cache, and that is what we call the stampeding herd. So you know it's it's like the the floodgates are opened and all of a sudden you get thousands of requests for the same or hundreds uh, with a CDN for for the same content. Uh, with request collapsing, what happens is all of the requests wait uh, for the one request that was relayed to origin to complete. And once that is complete, then all of the other requests are handled. Uh, and that is in the case where there is no stale available. So you mentioned soft purging earlier. Um, with, if there is a stale available, then that, of course, is served instead. And so what happens is if you have, say, you know, you mentioned earlier you had like a 30-minute TTL previously. Um, with that case, um, with, with us, and if you use the, the origin shield, which means that all of our data centers go to one of our data centers before going to origin. Uh, I think that's coming up uh, in, in the next slide. Um, yep, that's the one. Um, 
So with that, every like you would only have one request for one object in 30 minutes. Uh, and of course, if you have, you know, a year, then you know you only have one request whenever you purge it within that year. That's basically it. And that's been huge for us. Uh, as, well, actually, we kind of talk about what this means from um, how many hits to origin we actually see. And this is interesting, too, because these statistics, if you look at March 6, 2015, uh, with our old CDN, uh, 5.7 million requests to origin. And then same date a year later using Fastly. And it's 1% it's of the requests. I mean, this is, this is huge from our total cost of ownership standpoint. So. Yeah, I, I, I can't say how happy I am about this. Um, <laughs> it was pretty. Would you say you're pretty stoked? Unreal. I would say I'm stoked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, it actually uh, helped us free up uh, some relatively powerful servers to do, you know, more interesting things uh, for the Drupal.org infrastructure. So, I mean, it's night and day, kind of looking at the request logs that are hitting the origin for updates and for uh, FTP downloads and the other services that we're using this for. And um, yeah, 1% of the requests are now hitting our, our origin. And we're able to do that sort of invalidation style purging, which has really you know, just kind of changed a lot about how we do things. Uh, you know, Security updates before, like if there was a critical security update, we'd have to go through and manually purge everything from the cache. Now it just works. Like it dynamically purges whatever the release is. And there's, there's a lot more uh, sort of automation around this, uh, which is great. Which equates to time savings for the team as well, which means we can be focused on you know, new features and improving the site and uh, taking care of some of the, the technical debt from a 15-year-old website. So <laughs> That is awesome. That's an amazing stat. Justifiably stoked, I would say. That's really yeah. cool, guys. Really glad uh, to see that. And, and, and just out of curiosity, because um, you mentioned earlier like how many requests you had in a month, but I forgot what that was. So how, how many requests do you get in a day um, that get um, reduced down to 60,000? Ooh, that's a good question. So it's 1.5 billion a month. Um, I would have to do the math to figure that out, and I'm afraid I'm not that quick. <laughs> It's a I lot. Like it's, we'll put it that way. I'll, I'll get that number for the end of the talk. How's that? Uh, <laughs> I'll, that's, I'll uh, 50 million. I, 50 million. I pulled up yeah. the calculator real quick. Oh, good. Uh, awesome. Yeah, that, that sounds about right because we get uh, basically about 15 million page views. And, and again, as we talked about before, like our, our biggest chunk of traffic is actually our updates and our downloads. Um, so the, that, that, that sounds about right from an update statistic standpoint. So that that's a ninety nine point nine percent hit hit ratio. That is amazing. It's pretty impressive. Uh, I've, I've actually watched that little gauge that you guys have in the dashboard, and it gives me great joy to watch the hit ratio stay where it stays. Um, it takes a pretty big event on our part for it to uh, to drop at all. So yeah, and those you know five minutes, thirty minutes, uh, hour, depending on kind of cron, like the hour. Crons are, you know, pretty crazy. Like we'll get up to four thousand requests in a minute, um, or in that graph, uh, which is per second, I believe. Yeah, per second. Yeah, so four thousand requests in a second um, when cron hits, and that's handled no problem. There's really no noticeable like increase in requests to our origins. And it's it's definitely huge. Um, no, this this is kind of interesting because I you, we we just did this right, Rudy. It was uh, less than a month ago that we we moved off of our load balancers, um, which is obviously a cost savings because now we've we've got we had two pretty beefy load balancers sitting in front of everything, and and now we don't need them anymore. We can uh, pass that light right along. So, Rudy, if you want to kind of describe that that structure a little bit and how that reduced our complexity. Uh, yeah, so you know, in, in the past we had used Varnish as a load balancer since it has you know pretty uh, sophisticated health checking and monitoring and and sort of like it, it can take web nodes in and out of rotation uh, based on the status checks and we had these load balancers that had you know decent 
uh, HA proxy health checking and, and were set up and they were working fine, uh, but we really didn't need them anymore. Um, so Fastly is now configured with the web nodes as direct backends in the Fastly configuration and that routes directly. <clears throat> so Fastly is routing directly to those web nodes uh, and performing the health checks uh, through the Varnish backend health checking. And it's easier for uh, our staff to take web nodes in and out of rotation because there's a web interface for it and you can uh, quickly revert and deploy uh, different configurations. Um, and it's also improved the latency uh, of the requests because we had sort of a sort of a, a weird issue with our uh, internal network being cross rack and some latency variations that were happening there and having these kind of direct route through Fastly, uh, which is now um, actually peered with us uh, through our ISP and our data center at the Seattle IX, uh, actually reduced our, our latency uh, pretty significantly for those first requests. Um, so kind of going on into that, uh, so Fastly is now appearing with Nero, uh, which is like the network for educational research in Oregon, or education and research, I think, uh, which does like all of the public universities and schools and OPB and some other uh, kind of the, it's basically like the, the government state ISP, um, <clears throat> which is where the open source lab is at Oregon State University. Uh, and being connected to that at the Seattle IX and also using the Origin Shield and routing all of our Origin Shield traffic through Seattle um, helped us win uh, pretty significantly uh, with you know performance and uh, keeping that like the time to first byte for the request uh, even lower than it was before. Uh, this is such a great open source win too, because it was one of those things that it came up because we had the relationship and because we had the relationship with OSL. But um, now, you know, we have the Python project benefiting from this and um, God, what are a few of the other ones that are sitting down there in OSL right now, Rudy? Um, well, even so outside of just like the, you know, Linux Foundation, Python software project, stuff like that, um, we have like things like GitHub. So like this makes GitHub faster for anyone that's on at Oregon State or University of Oregon or at a high school in Oregon um, and improves the kind of the latency there uh, for those people too. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so we're gonna jump into some, some headier topics. Some of these aren't actually implemented on uh, Drupal.org yet, but uh, we want to we want to kind of talk about some things that are uh, capable in the Fastly platform and, and things that we're looking forward to, to using. So, uh, surrogate keys. Why would you use these? When, when do you use these? No, oh, yeah. Well, like it says here, and Doc, feel free to jump in. Um, like you, you can tag responses with the key and then purge those objects associated with the key in one command. So there's a lot of ways this can be useful. Um, Drupal 8 uh, takes good advantage of this. <laughs> yeah, so um, a, a good use case, or example use case I use for this is, um, say you have two templates. You have one for desktop and one for uh, mobile, and then you have different pieces of content. Um, if you tag the responses with both a template ID and content ID, then you know, because you're going to have two versions of each piece of content, um, you can then purge the um, a piece of content in one request by just uh, purging its tag, and then both the mobile and the desktop version are going to be purged, even if they have different URLs. And then uh, if you make a change to a template and you make a purge for that template key, then everything using that template is going to be purged in one command. And this is, for instance, uh, what, what that might look like. So you can see the circuit key header. The first uh, response has template three in article 1938. And the second response is template five, article 1938. So they're the same article IDs, different templates. <clears throat> um, yep. So how does that relate to, to Drupal? 
In Drupal 7, there is a, a very basic caching support, and Fastly did make a, uh, a plugin for that, which is based off of the Varnish plugin. However, um, that caching support was pretty basic, and that also means that our, you know, uh, our plugin works, but it's even more basic. <clears throat> so um, uh, your uh, fearless leader, Dries Boutart, um, made a, a blog post about this, um, and we saw that. And um, I met up with a couple of guys, uh, among which uh, Wim Lears at DrupalCon in LA last year, and um, they showed me that you know there's this thing called cache tags, which looks a lot like um, circuit keys, and we're just like sweet. They're basically the same thing. So we had some discussion. I mean, there is a size limit in, uh, in Fastly, and it used to be 1K. It's now 16K. And that um, if you have a very complicated Drupal 8 site, that cache tags header can be um, immense. It can, be, it can get really, really big. So what we did is, um, as a little bit of a shortcut, uh, we hash all of the keys and truncate them down to three characters. Uh, which means that there can be overlap between some of the things, um, if you know. Um, but we only do that if it goes over that 16k limit, um, which then means that we we purge both. Um, why it doesn't matter that much is because when the um, uh, when you do purge uh, a key that has overlap, so you might accidentally purge two or three keys at the same time. It's just a purge. It just means that we grab it from origin at the uh, again. <clears throat> All right. So, me and Wim talked about this. How uh, and and he went back and just you know spent like two or three hours and came up with a Drupal eight version of our plugin, which he then submitted to Drupal.org and. Uh, We've then since taken that and we've added, uh, we've, we've gone through his to-do list, which was add tests um, and do a little polish, uh, which means that for Drupal 8, we now have incredibly good caching support, like seriously proud of it. Um, and, oh, sorry, Drupal 8 has very good caching support. Um, and the Fastly plugin now really synergizes with that and makes it like something that just works very smoothly. So um, me uh, and Wim and uh, Fabian, I uh, forget his last name. Um, do you guys, Rudy, do you remember his last name? <laughs> uh, Fabian Franz? Yes, oh, thank yes. you. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I was trying so, to unmute my audio so I could say it, but you be, <laughs> didn't want to say it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So uh, me, Wim, and Fabian had uh, uh, one or two very long Skype calls about, uh, you know, what else can we do uh, f for the future with Fastly. Um, and one of the things, uh, can you go back a couple of slides? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, it, it, no worries. Like it's uh, supporting cache contexts. So currently, um, with, with Drupal 8, not only are there cache tags, but also cache contexts which allow you to serve different contexts based on things like accept language headers or geo-targeting um, and still have them cached. And face of the moon is my favorite because that is something that is absolutely useless to, I think, 99.99% .99 of the websites out there. Um, but it is something that the, the Drupal core developers like to use as a, um, as a use case for something weird, like something that nobody uses, but, you know, they still want to be able to support so that they can say, like, if we can support this, we can support anything. Um, I so often that, try to limit updates to Drupal.org during full moons. That's, that's actually... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very wise. So that, that, is, that is something that we are discussing and, and working on uh, implementing for, for Fastly as well. All right. Nice. A uh, couple of quick links here. Uh, well, our website, of course. Um, Bautart.net is the Making Drupal 8 Fly blog post that I showed. Uh, Vim Leers has a very good talk at, uh, I think it was Barcelona. Mm -hmm. 
uh, where he talked about caching at the edge with CDNs. And the last link there is the uh, Fastly plugin for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. And I, I put a little plug in here. It hasn't been accepted yet, but I know that uh, you and uh, Fabian uh, put in a talk for DrupalCon New Orleans uh, that's also going to be kind of talking about some of these, these, these future forward things. Yep, correct. Getting gonna... in a little bit more detail there. I, I'm, I'm really hoping it uh, makes it through the, uh, the community uh, acceptance process because I, I think it's going to be a great one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. All right. Well, I, I love that you dropped in the conventions. Uh, <laughs> that, that was that was nice as we were putting together this deck. That just gave me a, a little bit of a smile. Um, are there any questions uh, in the Q and A? Does anybody have anything that they want to drop in and uh, ask the participants of the the webcast? Not seeing any. Any any other kind of closing thoughts uh, from those on the panel? Like. Uh, what is it, something you want to add here at this last bit? So I'll, I'll throw one out there. Um, the, the use cases here that you guys are, are doing on updates is, is awesome, right? And I think um, for the majority of folks that are doing using Drupal in production, it's, you know, it's a lot of digital publishing and a lot of digital media, right? Um, I guess the, the application of what you're seeing from Fastly or just actually the sort of the invalidation strategy, like how do you feel like that would impact a digital publishing site, the actual end user on Drupal. Oh, yeah. Well, combined with kind of uh, what Doc was talking about with the being able to tag and, and purge that way, um, but even just in general, from like a general perspective, uh, being able to like publish a, a news article or a uh, you know, big important post, leaving your cache intact and purging that particular post uh, without having to worry about clearing the rest of the cache and <clears throat> and all of the kind of like slowdown that happens with that. Um, being able to just invalidate one particular piece of content or even one kind of subset of that content uh, with something like an edge site include or something like that uh, really helps speed up those sites. Um, you know, that, that slashed out effect is really no longer a problem if you're, <laughs> able to, you know. Right. Keep, keep oh. slash dot cached. Oh man, you're digging deep. Slash dot. <laughs> wow, that that takes me back. <laughs> it does take me back. Nice. Hey, I somebody somebody thing. dropped a slash dot article into Slack at least you know in the last month. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But yeah, it's definitely a thing. I mean, like uh, for for publishing, you you need to know that it's going to deliver your content quickly. That it's going to be able to refresh it if something changes. Um, you know, the news cycle anymore is near instantaneous uh, when people are expecting things. So being able to kind of respond to that in a near instantaneous way is, is critical. I mean, there's definitely like huge overlap there. I mean, updates and, and packaging and that, that sort of thing. It's not really like publishing like from a media perspective, but we're, you know, we're publishing releases and able to invalidate that particular release that gets published and have it Right. Your instant available and not have any like additional load on our origins when that's happening is is really a kind of an amazing thing. And the I, I think the use case too that uh, Drupal has for not only the publishing side of things but uh, for extranets and for building um, essentially building that services layer for for new systems. I mean we've we've had a lot of conversation in the community recently around headless Drupal and when you use it and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, all of this caching still applies to that. All this delivery still has to happen at near real time in order for these applications to be performant. So I think it extends beyond just the, the immediate thing that you see on the web to that kind of, this is, this is deep infrastructural uh, foundation to build upon. And uh, if, you, if you have to deliver things quickly and with a, a high degree of, uh, of that, that, that caching that, uh, that prevents your your site or your application from getting overwhelmed it's it's critical right on. yeah i mean I, i'm obviously biased coming from fastly but having spent a lot of time in the digital publishing world it, it seems to me that if you're not using a cdn for any of the use cases um that we've talked about here in the webinar i think you should seriously be looking at it right and to me rudy to your point i, I think the update service that drupal run the drupal association runs is exactly the same as any digital publishing 
news cycle, right? I think the timelines might be a little bit shorter in some cases, in others they might not be, but the stampeding herd problem is definitely one. Uh, feeding news in a real-time manner is definitely one, right? And when updates need to go out, they need to go out. And there's kind of no bones about that. So this has been really useful and really instructive to me. I, I appreciate it. I know a bit about what you guys are doing, but it was really great to see it in this context that kind of all rolled together. I, I actually have a, a story from a different customer of Fastly's um, who uh, had an origin platform that was getting overwhelmed and they were like, oh my God, we have to do something. So they, they built out a whole new platform with way bigger, beefier servers, completely greenfielded it, and at the same time decided to implement Fastly as well. Um, at first they were just thinking for, uh, to use us for the static um, stuff, and then they realized, oh, hey, <laughs> we, can, we can do all of our uh, pages with this as well. And um, everything went down really smoothly, and then a week later they, they looked at their, uh, their monitoring and went, hmm, the load on this new platform is so low that we could have skipped the migration to the new hardware and just implement it fastly, and we would have been just fine. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, we've seen things like that as well. I mean, if, if you look at how bored, we have, we have some of the beefiest database servers uh, imaginable. And uh, if you look at how bored they became after our transition to Fastly, it's 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 pretty significant. You know, being able to to prevent those those requests coming all the way through and um, being able to cache appropriately is huge. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely excited about being able to repurpose some of our existing infrastructure and and help you know improve the parts of of our infrastructure that need improvement now um, and kind of really really helped us there. Um, and I think uh, more to the point about, you know, media content sites, um, that talk that was given in Barcelona uh, that you're talking about, like even in more detail kind of goes over like how small that kind of like origin server actually can be at this point uh, using the, the invalidation and the, you know, dynamic sort of like invalidation technique uh, for purging content. Yeah, a couple of uh, AWS micros, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> one, one or two. I yeah. don't know if we'll be able to get away with that on Drupal.org just yet, but uh, <laughs> but definitely, I think I think a lot of publishers can. I mean, they can they can really shrink it down to the the minimum possible uh, minimum possible server and let all the performance come from the edge. So it's huge. Yeah, that's a very cool thread. I, I, we've seen that um, theme repeated. Uh, not just with digital publishing, but in a lot of other vectors as well. I think there's this awesome case study up on our site uh, about Hotel Tonight where they reduced their origin load by 80% or something like that, right? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, not only that, that was on an API yes. for getting the, uh, the hotels available near you that had the uh, latitude and longitude in the URL. Oh, wow. And that lat yeah. long is actually processed at our edge, right? Yes. That's all in VCL. Yeah. yeah, in it, we we use the varnish configuration language uh, at at the edge to chop the, the the lat long down to two decimals, which means that you know uh, I think that's about half a mile, maybe a quarter mile apart. So you know everybody on the same city block gets the same results, and and that made their hit ratio go from zero to I believe like sixty to seventy percent on just that API endpoint. That's awesome. Some pretty sick stuff. I mean, that's one of the great things about Varnish and, and Drupal having such a tight integration with Varnish um, in D8 um, is is pretty awesome, right? Like, there's a lot that you can do at the edge uh, to kind of further the the, the the theme of of offloading stuff from your origin, so that your origin can actually just focus. You know, you can take all that CPU and disk and, and apply it to actual smart, intelligent, hard problems versus working on um, just serving content, which is, I mean, that's what the, a CDN is supposed to do, right? So it's, it's pretty interesting. That is awesome. Great use case. Yeah, look, um, the, the, the uh, Paul Henning Gump, which is the, uh, the, the, the main architect and um, a developer on, on the open source Varnish, um, he likes to liken uh, Varnish to a printing press. So you know, uh, Drupal would be the 
the, the writer, the author, uh, um, you know, the, the layout maker, et cetera, the graphic designer, and then the printing press, that's Farnish. That just takes the original and just makes 100,000 copies in a couple of seconds, like, done. Nice. All right. Well, you know, the, I, I love the use cases, and I, I want to throw out, uh, like, one more thing that I think is a kind of a good thing to close on, which is uh, a huge thank you to, to Fastly for being such an awesome partner in the open source world and particularly a great partner to Drupal. Um, it's, it's been huge having uh, people who understand open source uh, help provide our technology stack. And uh, it has is, is really extended our reach and certainly made us better stewards of the, uh, the, the resources that we've gotten from the community. So I, I really appreciate it. I want to say thanks. Yeah, no, our pleasure, Josh, really is. I mean, Drupal is obviously a huge part of the open source community. Provides an enormous and incredibly valuable platform for a lot of folks out there, um, and just beyond that, you know, we we came from open source roots, and we like to stay true to that. So, appreciate you less letting us be a part of it too. Awesome. Well, thanks for the time, guys, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, close out. Uh, for those of you who uh, came on a little bit late, the, the entire uh, presentation will be posted up on YouTube shortly. Um, we'll be sure to publish the link to that and uh, connect it to a couple of the articles that we've put out there about uh, Drupal.org and Fastly and how they're working together. So again, thanks everyone for the time and uh, we'll see you all on the flip side. Thanks everyone. Thanks, everybody.